You know, all of us have this still small voice, which is distinct from mental chatter that arises from the stillness as stated in John 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. Now, this still small voice has been spoken about throughout the ages by artists, inventors, and the sages. We even see it all throughout the scriptures of the world. They all point to it within as the source for all answers. Now, this still small voice eventually becomes the only voice you listen to to experience vivid mental clarity and guidance from within on the journey to actualizing your vision. So that's in today's video, we discuss releasing identification to dogma to allow from the stillness, the still small voice to arise and listen to exclusively on the journey to actualizing our visions. So we discussed crafting your vision last week from your desired intention. We also discussed in Sunday's video, accepting your vision as already realized in imagination. This leaves an impression on the subconscious mind to allow the unseen power to take that vision and actualize it for you. Today, I would like to discuss the art of allowing your vision to actualize once the impression has been made on the subconscious mind, which includes listening to yourself and trusting yourself as ideas, plans, and inspiration are received within from infinite intelligence. So consider this. There are infinite possible combinations and permutations or possibilities as to how the unseen power unfolds the pathway to actualizing your vision. For example, one may consume a lot of information on building a business, which includes information on marketing, sales, innovation, leadership, operations, finance, etc. And upon consuming that information, which is based on theories and the goals actualized by others, they may become fixed on doing things those ways, even if it is not true and authentic to your way of doing things. This belief of others' ways being better than our authentic ways can result in putting excess potential on their way of doing things, thus forcing it unnaturally, rather than allowing the unseen power within to guide the way and take care of everything, which may or may not include the insights gathered from others' experiences, which again, their experiences are only a small revelation of the infinite possible combinations and permutations of possibilities of how the unseen can unfold the path to actualizing your vision. A personal example would be when I was building my IT business. During that time, I was consuming a lot of information on marketing. And what I found that actually worked ideally for me was to grow the business by making a few intuitive moves that produced the greatest results. During that time, however, it was not as easy for me as it is today to listen to the still small voice within that revealed the way. I felt at times I had to do it the way the information suggested or I would not succeed. The various information that was presented, although helpful, was revealing beliefs of fear, doubt, or uncertainty. So it was not the information. It was what I was relating to the information that was revealing what was going on within, which the mental chatter that was spawned as a result of the fear, doubt, or uncertainty belief identification was where I was not allowing myself to prioritize the still, small voice that knows the way. And what I mean is, the key for thinking for yourself on the journey to actualizing your vision is to listen to your heart and intuition as they already somehow know what you truly want to become. The information of this world is secondary to them, as Steve Jobs mentioned in his commencement speech. And this is true when it comes to any information, including information from perceived authority figures. Just because a standard was set and perhaps persisted upon for many years by perceived authoritative figures and others that followed them does not mean that their way is ideal for you. The still small voice within reveals the ideal way for you. So the key here is to practice depolarization as applicable, to listen to the still small voice that knows the way. 
By depolarizing, I mean not identifying with the inharmonious corresponding beliefs in relation to appearances, which includes information. So fear, doubt, and uncertainty thoughts spawn from corresponding beliefs that are identified with. For me at that time was a belief that others know more than the still small voice and I need to do what they are doing, which some were theories and some were ways that, although worked for them, were not authentic to my style. These beliefs, which distort one's ability to think for themselves, are formed by unnecessarily looking around to see how others are doing things, which is limited exposure to some of the possible ways of doing things, and believing that those ways are the only ways, even if they are inauthentic, thus allowing themselves to be trapped by dogma. So depolarization occurs when returning to the stillness, which clears up the identification. As simple as this may seem on the surface, it is actually powerful beyond measure. I learned this from a book I read a while back called The Power of Kabbalah by Yuda Berg, which was sent to me from a client at the time who was a very successful entrepreneur, and this book was one of his favorites. It said, do not react, the creator sends the light. And this is because soul doership is an illusion. I can of myself do nothing, the father within doeth the work. I and the father are one, as in you and the power are one, and there's no other cause. All arise from and appear animated by God, including the sense of individual self, created perfectly in the image of the Creator to experience life ideally as the world made visible through the five senses. So when someone appears polarized to an appearance, they are in mind identified to a belief that's playing out, which could be conflict with another person, for example. This is because they are subconsciously giving unnecessary importance to an appearance, revealing a belief they are identified with. This is what I mean by polarization. Unnecessary excess importance as a result of belief identification. No one truly desires this and give excess importance this way unless they are identified with a belief that generates that excess importance. For example, if one is desperate to make a sale, which is belief identification, they may appear to put unnecessary importance on the conversation in a way that appears off-putting to the prospective client and they don't end up getting the deal. Perhaps if they were calm about it, the deal would go through. So as a result of polarization to a belief in their subconscious mind, in relation to the appearance, they throw themselves out of their flow. I call this a flow breaker. They break their own flow by reacting to an appearance as a result of identification to an inharmonious belief in mind. Then as a result of not being in the flow, they may become forceful and pushy and the entire experience now becomes unpleasant for everyone. So beliefs that generate excess potential act as a form of subconscious control rather than allowing. It could be based on a belief one identifies with that the experience seems to threaten them, or identification to something external which is still within, as all identification happens within. And from this identification, the excess importance arises. So in that moment, they can be still, and the Creator sends the light. The inside is revealed within, via the still, small voice, and they know what to do or not do. So stillness can be accessed at any moment. The stillness also allows you to acknowledge the true nature of self, the I that is already fulfilled. I and my Father are one, and thus the true nature of self is love, happiness, bliss, fulfillment, and peace. By abiding as the stillness, one becomes depolarized, returning to an unbiased way of being, allowing the light to transform the experience. This is the divine center, as James Allen once said in his book, The Heavenly Light. The secret of life, of abundant life, with its strength, its felicity, and its unbroken peace, is to find the divine center within oneself, and to live in and from that, instead of in that outer circumference of disturbances, the clamors, cravings, and argumentations which make up the animal and intellectual. 
These selfish elements constitute the mere husks of life and must be thrown away by those who would penetrate to the central heart of things, to life itself. So, to throw away identification to beliefs that play out as clamors, cravings, and argumentations, we return to the divine center, stillness. With a few deep breaths, or closing our eyes for a moment, going for a walk in nature, listening to some calm music, meditation, or an auto-suggestion that calms the mind. All of these work perfectly. Returning to the stillness, with any of the ways mentioned, also allows emotions to release. Emotions are energy in motion. We let them be while in the stillness. What we relate to emotions is through beliefs. By transcending beliefs in the moment, by abiding as the stillness, the undesirable labels are not associated with the emotions, and thus emotions are allowed to be released naturally. This is what I mean by do not react. It is not fighting emotions or labeling emotions, rather allowing them to be. The same is to be said when it comes to thoughts of disharmony. You may observe them in mind. That is where thoughts arise, in mind. And you can let them be without identifying with them. For this, I recommend my seven-day mental diet video I did on Emmett Fox's book. I'll link in the description to it. So self-acceptance is key. In Sunday's video, we discussed self-acceptance. If you haven't seen it, I'll link in the description to it. Accepting that the true nature of self is one with all, is love, happiness, peace, fulfillment, and bliss. Satchit Ananda in Sanskrit, which is truth consciousness bliss or existence consciousness bliss, which means the nature of existence itself is bliss, as in you are bliss. And you are also love, happiness, peace, fulfillment, and there's nothing to do to earn these things. We realize we are that by releasing identification to beliefs that suggest otherwise, to allow the mind to be purified from these beliefs and remain fluid and dynamic the way it was truly designed to be, as stated in the Hermetica. Two gifts were bestowed upon humanity. They were mind and speech. They, arising from God, are equal to immortality. So now is where all the power is. We realize this in moments of stillness. Now is where I am. From there, the still small voice arises to guide the way. So anything we think feelingly upon now in relation to what appears now in this moment or the past, which is purely imaginal, and the future, which is purely imaginal, is impressed upon the subconscious mind to queue up to appear in some shape or form, and so we're allowing this to be guided from within via the still, small voice. As Joseph Murphy said, in The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, an auto-suggestion that he provided was, The infinite intelligence of my subconscious mind reveals to me everything I need to know at all times, everywhere. The infinite intelligence of my subconscious mind reveals to me everything I need to know at all times, everywhere. The infinite intelligence of my subconscious mind reveals to me everything I need to know at all times, everywhere. Play that on loop over and over again and fall asleep to that auto suggestion to impress the subconscious mind to spawn out the thought any time if you become polarized. Right in that moment, you will be reminded to abide in the stillness, and then you will realize that you always know what to do or not do, following your heart and intuition, silencing, as James Allen said, the outer circumference of disturbances, to allow to arise the still, small voice to reveal the way. As we discussed in a recent video, the still, small voice, which, by the way, the still small voice provides the best auto suggestions, which you may record and play on loop to meditate on the word, as stated in Joshua 1 3. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful 
to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. By the way, speaking of that video, here's a quote again from the book we discussed, Abd Allah, Teacher Healer, by Walter Lanyon. Abd Allah says, This is a glorious thought, and one well worth sitting in the silence with. I and my father are one. You have heard it for years, yet when you ponder it anew, with the thought that from the next thought, I'm going to think God's thoughts. It will reveal to you a newness of life and purpose you have never known before. This still small voice, of which so much has been said, will finally become the only voice as you begin to realize your oneness with the Father within. So at any moment, you may call upon infinite intelligence within, which is not separate from you. How can the source from which you arise from be separate from you? Not only is it not separate from you, it is infinitely intelligent as in it is the source of all that appears. All this intelligence you see around you arose from the same source and it is within. And it arises from the stillness. For example, I mentioned my IT business. The story was that one day during the stillness, the still small voice arose and presented an idea. It was to reach out to someone who ran a Facebook group for local business owners. I connected with him and we agreed to meet up for coffee and we worked out a referral deal. Shortly after, he referred me to a steel company to provide IT services. They gave me so much work that I ended up hiring my first contractor. Then the accountant on site at the location saw the great work that we were doing and hired us to provide her office IT services. Then from there, being an accountant and having access to so many businesses, she opened up her contacts and she referred so much business that I had to tell her to slow down at some point so we could process the business. And that took the business to success, all by abiding as the stillness, to allow the insight to arise, by depolarizing as applicable, as it is depolarization that releases identification to the beliefs in mind that result in reactivity. And upon not reacting, the light was received within through the still, small voice as the insight. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I listen exclusively to the still small voice that guides on the journey to actualizing my vision. This still small voice in its infinitely intelligent ways guides all of creation to actualize the desires of the heart and thus reveals to me everything I need to know at all times, everywhere. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.